Today, we're going to be making F122 as realistic as possible. This is a continuation of a series with brakes, so do go and check out the previous video if you haven't already. Link to that down in the description. But I'm going to use the data that he sent to me to modify the game to try and make it as close to real life as I possibly can. Let's do it. All right, so I've made the mod. I've got a laptop actually that is pretty damn close to George Russell's real life poll time around Hungary. I think I'm something like two tenths off just under that. I'm really happy with the end result. I'm really excited to see the data and to see how close it's going to be. But first of all, let me talk you through exactly what I've changed. DRS. You said DRS was a bit more powerful in real life uh, compared to in the game. So that was a really easy one to do. Just up the power of the DRS. Make sure the top speed's similar, which I've done. I think it was 300 12 kilometers now from what I recall roughly boom done that one was super easy we figured out that probably tire temps weren't being simulated properly in the game so that the tires were dying over the course of a lap in real life but not in the game so what I ended up doing then was multiplying by five the link between surface temperature and carcass temperature but in addition what I had to do was also allow more heat from the brakes what I did was I multiplied by eight the heat transfer between the brakes and the carcass of the tire let's get those tires dying off just like they do in real life and hopefully, data says I've achieved it. I know the lap time's pretty close. Come on, Blake, hit me with it. How close did I really get? We can see that the start of the lap was good before and instantly we've said DRS on off. Top speeds are great now. So the balance of drag and engine power between the game and real life is reasonable. The overall correlation is genuinely improved in terms of lap time and cornering speeds with a few caveats. Sector two and three are very close now, which we, they were not before. However, the game is now far too weak in the high speed corners. Uh, we're 10 to 15 kilometers an hour too slow through uh, turn four, the fast left hander. And then towards the end of the lap going out of the back straight, the fast right hander were about 15 kilometers too slow. So in terms of lap time delta, you may be losing a tenth and a half through that corner relative to the track. But since the corner is so quick, you're not losing that much time there. The last really interesting thing that I've noticed is here in sector three. Turn 12 and turn 14 are still too fast compared to the track but the approach through turn 13 looks a little bit similar. For a single lap with, you know, temperature input pretty reasonable, I would say that if we go back and look at some of this stuff, it probably won't make sense in a race setting, which is which is interesting, but that's not the scope of this. It's just to say, where do we need the grip in the, which places? Yeah, yeah. So so you said we lose time with the high speed. So does that mean we gain the time with the low speed to balance it out? Because the lap time ends up being fairly close. It's a little bit of give and take. It's not all low speed. It's not all high speed. But in general, um, you are losing out in the high speed a couple of tens in each of those. And you've gained it back through various medium and low speed corners. My guess would be that it's tire temperature evolution through high speed corners, not letting you have the right amount of grip at the apex. So you have to back it off. Or now with these grips, you don't have enough aerodynamic load uh, on the tire. Yeah, I, I suspect what we've done there, we've, we've sort of inadvertently revealed a weakness in the game because it's interesting. You're saying I'm slightly quicker through low speed but then much lower through high speed. The core temperatures weren't overheating that much through the high speed corners because as you say, the corners are so short. I don't think it's that the tires are necessarily hotter. It is just a, a, a something else. <laughs> Interesting. A, 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 a question mark elsewhere in, in the game with the way it works in general. Yeah, I, I think overall we're 10 kilometers out in the high speed corners versus being one to two seconds out at the end of the lap. I, I, I think you would probably take that. The, the true test of that would be to say, how does it behave at high fuel or a race stint and everything else like that? But that's a that's a whole nother whole nother thing. That's super interesting, though. Good work. I, I like I'm happy with the end result. It, it sounds like it's not quite spot on, but honestly, I. Uh, to, to, to go from here, if I was to say, okay, let's take this and now let's do another step. And then you start getting to, like you said, oh, what, what, what if we do it on a race run? What, can we make this work across the race run? Well, maybe, but it's, yeah, there's, there's, there's too much. I think this is, this is, this is my limit, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I, I think this is, I think this is a good crack at it to understand. And if anything, it's more of an understanding the impact of all these features and not only game developers, but real Formula One teams face. Obviously, the Formula One teams will have a lot more data and they're doing these same kind of exercises, which is something I used to do on a weekly basis. It's, it's a very interesting look at a super complicated uh, problem that, that teams have groups of people working on, not just a couple of us. We, we, as you say, we've kind of always inadvertently stumbled across 
the difficulty of making a realistic family model, right? Like, yeah. there's a billion variable, variables going to it, particularly when you get to the tires. As much as people might get frustrated, oh, why can't you do this? Make it more realistic this way. Make it more realistic this way. Yes, okay. If you want to change it in that way, we can do that. But it will affect these 10 other things over here that will make the loads worse. So I, I, I feel like we, we've inadvertently shown how difficult it is, to be honest, to, to, to make it more realistic. But hey, I think what we should do now is we should take this mod that we've made and try it at a very different track. So hungry, high downforce track, lots of turns, not many straights. What's the opposite of that? Of the Temple of Speed, Monza. Monza, exactly, Monza. So I think we should just go with the exact same mod, not gonna make any more tweaks, just use this exact mod around Monza and probably see how hella unrealistic it's gonna be. <laughs> so let's give this mod a go on Monza for the very first time. We found it's quite realistic around Hungary. Is it going to be realistic around Monza? I suspect the tyres are going to overheat much, much more. As we've seen, the uh, the brakes tend to heat up the tyres a lot. And obviously, there's a few. There's bigger braking zones around Monza. But actually, there's longer straights to let the brakes cool. As you can see, that's the, the high brake temperatures there warming up the carcass of the tyre. We've, of course, also made DRS more powerful. So we should be a little bit quicker in the straight. It'll be interesting to see if that quicker in the straight ultimately ends up overpowering the tyres, which it looks like is exactly what it's going to do. Oh, so quick in this straight, struggling to get it stopped even. But actually, the, the, the brake warming isn't enough. The tyres are actually cooling down in, in, in the straights slightly, which, you know, is... Whoa, hello. Yeah, overheated there. Look, the rear left just completely went on me. So maybe by the end of the lap, I'm done. I'll tell you what, I might be able to do a slightly better lap with this mod because the DRS is that much more powerful. Let's see. All right, let's try that again. This time, hopefully without the mistake of the final corner. And I honestly do think this mod will be faster around Monza, not slower. We'll see. Without mods, I was getting to about 3, 4, 8 by turn 1. I mean, look look how much quicker we are with this more powerful DRS. That's probably too powerful, this track. Over 360k. Coming into turn 1. Trying to get it stopped, which I do manage to do nicely. I'll get the temperatures up for you in just a second. Just trying to concentrate for now. with a good lap. Because I genuinely do think with the bus being that much quicker, over 10 kilometers an hour quicker, coming to turn 1, I do believe... We will be able to be quicker with this mod because the tyres aren't really getting hot apart from that final turn. Still plenty up on the AI. Open that really powerful DRS once again. Really wraps up the speed. I'm pretty sure the DRS is too powerful now on this track. Do they reach 360k around Monza? I'm not sure they do. That was reasonable. That's it. Flat out. One more quarter to go. Again, tyres aren't really hot. They actually cool down. The, the car of the tyre actually cools down on this straight. But probably is going to overheat on this exit. Probably a bit too cautious there, possibly. Uh, probably, yeah, probably a little bit too cautious. Probably did, lost a bit more time than I need to, but can we be in mid-19? Can we actually be faster with this mod? Yes, we can. We are faster with our realistic mod than without modding around Monza. Well, there we go then, guys. It's actually quite hard to make a realistic handy model in a racing game. Who knew? We actually made it quite realistic in Hungary with the changes, but then as soon as we applied that to a very different circuit in Monza, we went from six tenths quicker than the pole time, the real pole time, to eight tenths quicker than the real pole time. So yeah, there's a lot more nuance to it, that's for sure. I imagine it's pretty hard even for developers with lots of tools. So for me as a modder with just a couple of hours time to spend on it, it just wasn't possible. Big shout out to Blake though for uh, helping me with all the analysis in this little series. Don't forget to subscribe both to him and to myself if you haven't already. We've got lots more content coming out just like this one very, very soon. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.